Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop where I try to show you some different techniques in modeling. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I got an uh, email from a customer that was going to build a rocket similar to this, kind of looking like an airplane. Uh, basically, it was going to have delta wings on it, so kind of triangular shaped wings on the back. And he wanted his rocket to glide. Um, but like this rocket here, it's not meant to glide because it needs to change positions. Um, we need the elevators to deflect upward on this to change the trim to make it glide. And his rocket wasn't going to glide unless he was able to do that somehow. Um, so what I want to talk today about is what I call transforming rockets. Rockets that change shape or change geometry somehow to activate elevators and things like that so that they can do different things. Um, let me get this one out of the way. There, there's a number of ways you can do this. Um, my two favorite ways are um, burn threads and sliding pistons. Uh, let's talk about the pistons first. Um, this is a, a helicopter rocket where the, it has these tabs on the, on the ends of the fins that are to cant over and cause the rocket to rotate. On the way up, we want it to go nice and straight so we get a big boost. But then on the way down, we want it to spin and slow down. So what I'm going to use is the rocket engine itself. The, the rocket engine has the ejection charge. And usually that ejection charge pushes the nose cone off the rocket and the parachute out. That's, in, in a basic sense, that is a transforming rocket. Um, but this time I'm going to use the ejection charge, I'm going to use that pressure that it creates to activate, to be the trigger for these um, tabs on the back. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to move the engine backwards. So it's going to pressurize the tube, the nose cone is glued on, it pressurizes the tube and slides the engine backwards. The engine's got to go somewhere. Um, a lot of times you'll see the engine kicked out of the rocket. Uh, but this time I'm going to hold the engine on, but I'm just going to make it slide backwards. And as it slides backwards, it releases these tabs. And then there's little rubber bands right here that pull up on the tabs. And so you can see the tabs all flip up as soon as the engine slides backwards. Now, that pressure inside the rocket has to be relieved. So as the engine slides back, and once the tabs are released, then I want to vent the pressure and that's what these holes are for. So as it slides forward, I block the holes. So now the gas pressurizes this. Once it slides back, the gas has a way to get out. This is, this is a pretty complex rocket, but I like, I like sliding pistons like this because it's really easy to prep for flight because all I have to do is slide it forward like that and it locks it in place. I got little tabs right here. Um, this rocket itself is, is kind of a bigger version of a rocket that we sell at Apogee. We call it the Texas Twister. So if you're interested in that, the Texas Twister is the one to get. Um, on, on a glider, I can do the same thing. This is a, an unpainted version of the SR-72 Darkbird. Uh, and this, again, uses a sliding piston. Uh, but this time, I'm going to do two things with the piston. One is I'm going to slide far enough back to release the, the elevator tabs. So this, once the elevator tabs are released, the rocket will transition into the glide. And also at the same time, I want to lose some weight. So I'm going to kick the whole engine out like this. This whole pod will fall out and I'll attach a streamer right here. And then this will come down separately. And now I got a really nice lightweight glider that's trimmed for a nice glide. And that's this kind of glider right here. And all these rings up here are to add weight because I need to move my center of gravity forward for boost so I get a nice straight boost. Um, the next type of activation device is the burn thread. Um, this is a helicopter rocket. And what I have is rubber bands here on the top that pull open the blades. You can see all the blades will pop up as soon as I, I let go. But how do we hold them down during boost? Because I want to keep them down because I want my rocket to go high. I'm into rocket height. <laughs> I want them to go as high as possible, so that's what I do. 
Um, so what I'll do on this rocket is I'll drill a hole through the tube. And the hole has two sides. And through this hole, I'm going to pass just a small string. And then with the string hanging down, I'll take the string and wrap it around, completely around the rocket, and then tie a knot in it so that it's held tight. Now when the rocket goes up, the ejection charge goes off. This time I'm using the heat of the ejection charge. That heat is so hot, it's going to burn that thread. Once it burns the thread, it slides out of the hole, and the blades pop open, and the rocket will, will then spin down. This is a nice, cool little trick to do. Let me get that out of the way. Um, on a glider, I can do the same thing. This is a, um, a rocket glider, which means it's meant to stay in one piece. There's boost gliders, like this SR-72. It's a boost glider. The technical term for boost glider means it comes down in two pieces. Rocket glider comes down in one piece. Everything stays together. Uh, but these are more challenging because now we've got to change configurations. We've got to do a transformation. During boost, I want my center of gravity forward, and that's why I have the engine at the top, and I want my center of pressure down at the bottom, and that gives you a nice stable boost. So by moving the wings backwards on the rocket, it moves my center of pressure back, and then I get a nice straight launch. Um, but now to transition, I need to move these this wing forward, so then it transitions into a glide. And on the side of the rocket, I have a rubber band that goes from a, a hook on the front to a hook right here in the back. And to activate this, I'm going to again use a burn thread. So this time, my thread is attached to a little hook right here at the back. It goes around another little hook on the here, goes along the side of the rocket, and through the hole and out the other side. So there is a thread right, running right through the middle of this. And as soon as that ejection charge goes off, and I can simulate that just by cutting the thread, and this is going to happen real quick, so pay close attention. And it's going to be loud. You can see like that, there's a nice little guillotine action there. So now at this point, my rocket will transition into a glide. Uh, and that's how the burn thread works. And you'll see that the thread right here is hanging off the back but that's okay, it just, it just trails the, the glider like that. This is another configuration. This is called a flop wing glider, where the wings actually flop down. Again, we use a rubber band to pull them forward. And what I'll do here is I'll, I'll run a thread through here, again up alongside, and then through a hole here. And as the ejection charge goes off, it will burn that thread. And you'll always see that whenever you're using a burden thread, you have to have vent holes because you have to let that gas get through. Um, even on the helicopter, I had vent holes up here in the front to allow those gases to get through, all those hot gases, because otherwise it's just pressurizing this and it'll push, push the engine out, which is what we did with the piston. So that is transforming rockets and how you make them work. If you like more information on this, um, you can go to the Apogee Components website. We have a book called Model Rocket Design and Construction that explains helicopters and gliders and how to transform them from boost to, to uh, transition. My name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. Why don't you go to our Facebook page today and tell us about your favorite transforming rocket. I'm looking forward to re reading what you have to say.